All right, conspiracy dude, somewhere around um, calling people zombies and having airplanes taking off. Uh, I think I got the point of what you're trying to say. I'm going to respond to it, and this will be my last response because I think you're trolling. I don't think you actually believe that the that the Earth is flat, but um, here's my response. Uh, you asked if the Earth is, is round and rotating, how come it is that an airplane going from east to west takes the same time as an airplane going from west to east and that's just a simple matter of a frame of reference uh, if you're in a moving train and you play a game of catch um, and um, have one person standing in the back of the train one person standing in the front of the train and we're not getting into relativity now we're just getting into plain old Newtonian uh, um, physics here the person in the back of the train throws a ball at so many miles an hour let's see I don't know, 15 miles an hour. Um, it will take the same amount of time to get to the front of the train as the person at the front of the train throwing the ball back to the back of the train because the entire frame of reference is moving. Um, the, the two people are moving, the ball is moving with the train, and yet they feel stationary because that's a stationary frame of reference. That is a relativistic idea that predates Einstein. It goes back to Galileo. And um, it's forms the basis of um, Newtonian physics as well, eventually in a modified form, Einstein's physics, but it's common sense. If you travel in a car and the car is going at a stationary speed, uh, you don't feel like you're moving. And anything that you move around in the car, if you were to throw something to the, from the back seat of the car to the front, it would take a certain amount of time. And if you were to throw it at the same speed, from the front seat of the car to the back, it would take that same amount of time. But it's all relative to the moving car. Just like um, the plane and you and, and, and the various locations on Earth are, are relative to the speed of the Earth rotating. Now, it's actually a good question because you do have to take into account the Coriolis effect. So it's not perfectly symmetrical west to east and east to west. Um, and that actually, by the way, proves that the Earth is rotating. Um, you also made the point about if the Earth is a sphere, and pardon me, if the Moon is a sphere, why do we see light reflecting off of it? Well, just take a spherical object and put it out in the sun and view it from different angles and you'll see it. You don't just need, you can't, it's not just such that you view it from one angle, and if you didn't view it from any other angle, you wouldn't, I didn't even understand that one, to be honest with you, conspiracy dude. What you were saying is that if the moon is a sphere, then we should only see the sun reflecting off of it at one angle. And I submit to you that you take a sphere, spherical object, and put it out in the sun, and you will be able to see it from multiple angles. That's just, you don't need a degree in optics to figure that out. Do the experiment. Do the experiment yourself by taking... Uh, an object maybe like that blue hat there, uh, it's in the room here. I guarantee you that if I moved it around the room, it would still reflect off of that light source into my eye due to the scattering of light. So um, that one, you don't even need a degree in optics to figure out. I mean, you call people zombies, so um, you should have the intelligence to, to figure that one out. Uh, the moon is made of rock, uh, and as rock, uh, it's going to reflect light just like rock on Earth would reflect light. So try an Earth-type rock and put it in different positions where it will reflect light from the sun, and you will see it from more than just one angle. Uh, as far as the redness of the moon, uh, you claim that that's not caused by atmospheric scattering, um, but the redness of the moon during a lunar eclipse. Um, you have to explain, A, why it happens every time there is a lunar eclipse, and B, come up with a reproducible model, and C, have some kind of a, a, a model of physics that could explain it. I guarantee you, and, and you reproduce it in the laboratory. Don't just rail against the re official scientific explanation. Reproduce it in the laboratory. I guarantee you that you can't. At least you can't in a way that would fit with the uh, actual phenomenon of a lunar eclipse. It, you wouldn't be able to do it. For the simple matter of the fact that it is indeed the light scattering, uh, uh, pardon me, well, it's the scatter of the light through the Earth's atmosphere. It's a complicated process, but it's like if you were to view through a prism. Uh, and you see the spectrum. Uh, as it is, only the longest wavelengths will 
make it through the Earth's atmosphere, and you will have the red of the moon, the blood red of the moon, until the moon passes fully into Earth's shadow. It's a beautiful sight. It happens every eclipse, um, and there is no better explanation for it than the heliocentric model. Finally, you talk about the, um, the uh, Arctic noon, and, and yeah, that's definitely, it's a very beautiful phenomenon, and that can only be explained by the Earth being round and by it having an axis um, in which in summertime the northern axis will be facing toward the sun hence your arctic noon where you don't if there was a long period of time where people way way up there in the arctic do not pass into the earth's shadow and then in winter time um, the axis is facing away from the sun where for a long period of time the people high up in the north do not uh, pass into daytime now that can only be explained by the Earth being round because precisely when the Arctic is at Arctic noon, the Antarctic is in Antarctic darkness. So that can only be explained by a round Earth model. Your model, conspiracy dude, would have the sun go around and around and around, and not only would that not explain Arctic darkness, but it also wouldn't explain sunrise or sunset. They would be impossible. You would never see them. You would just see the sun going around and around and around. So um, these are just basic scientific facts. I'm not a genius. I can I can think of them. I think you can too. Conspiracy dude, I think you're trolling. And so it's on that basis, uh, just realizing that you're trolling and that you're not serious, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave this conversation. So this is CH is True, signing off to bigger and better things.